Women in Haiti have equal constitutional rights as men in the economic, political, cultural and social fields, as well as in the family. However, the reality in Haiti is quite far from the law. Political, economic and social features of Haiti negatively affect most Haitians, but Haitian women experience additional barriers to the full enjoyment of their basic rights due to predominant social beliefs that they are inferior to men and a historical pattern of discrimination and violence against them based on their sex. Discrimination against women is a structural feature in Haitian society and culture that has subsisted throughout its history, both in times of peace and unrest. <laughs> women and society Some Haitian scholars argue that Haitian peasant women are often less restricted socially than women in Western societies or even in comparison to more westernized elite Haitian women. They attribute this fact to the influence of African matriarchal systems and of the Haitian voodoo religion which places women at the center of society contrary to purely Judeo-Christian systems. Women priests named mambos play equal roles to male priests or hongan in Haitian voodoo. The sexual equality inherent to Haitian voodoo translates into the inclusion of women in all aspects of society. Peasant women specifically, because of their proximity to voodoo, have traditionally played a crucial role in Haitian life. Compared to their Latin American counterparts, the participation of Haitian women in agriculture, commerce and industry has been high. During the U.S. occupation of Haiti 1915 peasant women actively participated in guerrilla warfare and anti-U.S. intelligence gathering to free the country. Because of their involvement in commerce, Haitian peasant women have accumulated resources independent of their mates in contrast to more westernized elite Haitian women. Topic. Political representation The Haitian government contains a Ministry of Women's Affairs, but it also lacks the resources to address issues such as violence against women and harassment in the workplace. A number of political figures such as Michel Pierre Louis, Haiti's second female prime minister, have adopted a determined agenda in order to fight inequalities and persecutions against women. Her position in office as Prime Minister has had positive effect on female political leadership in a country where the percentage of women in government at ministerial level was 25% in 2005. History of the Haitian women's movement The women's movement emerged in Haiti in the 1930s during an economic crisis which is thought to have forced some middle-class Haitian women to work outside the home for the first time unlike peasant women who had always done so. This was also a time at which more elite women began to pursue post-secondary education and when l'Université d'État de Haiti opened its doors to women. The first Haitian woman to receive a secondary education graduated during this period in 1933. One of the first established feminist organizations in Haiti was called the Ligue Feminine d'Action Sociale, Feminine League for Social Action, and was created in 1934. Its mostly elite initial members included Madeleine Sylvain, Alice Garut, Fernand Bellegarde, Thérèse Hutacourt, Alice Mathon, Marie Thérèse Colomon, Marie Thérèse Poitevian. The League was banned by the government two months after its founding. The League was re-established when it agreed to study its goals instead of immediately implementing them. The League is credited for the granting of voting rights for women in 1957. In 1950, writer and feminist Paulette Pujol Oriel joined the League. She later served as president of the League from 1997 until her death on March 11, 2011. She was also a founding member of L'Alliance des Femmes Haitiens, an umbrella organization for more than 50 women's groups. Some women were appointed to government leadership positions under François Duvalier. Rosalie Adolphe, aka Madame Max Adolphe, was appointed head of the secret police, Volontaires de la Sécurité Nationale or VSN, while Lydia Ogindi was named undersecretary of labor in 1957, and Lucienne Hirtelu, the widow of former President Dumerse Estime, was Haiti's first female ambassador. Marie-Denise Duvalier nearly succeeded her father in 1971. Topic. Sexual violence Women in Haiti may suffer threats to their security and well-being because of rape, kidnapping and human trafficking. Women suffer the most from Haiti's chronic political instability. 
documented cases of politically motivated rape, massacres, forced disappearance, and violent assaults on entire neighborhoods increased greatly at the end of 1993 under the military dictatorship of Raúl Cedras. Reports from women's rights groups in Haiti revealed that women were targeted for abuse in ways and for reasons that men were not. Uniformed military personnel and their civilian allies threatened and attacked women's organizations for their work in defense of women's rights and subjected women to sex specific abuse ranging from bludgeoning women's breasts to rape. The troubles before the 2004 coup were seen by most of the nationwide women's group as a reminder of the 1991 94 coup d'etat tactics with the use of rape, kidnapping, and murders as forms of intimidation. If most of the feminist activists in Haiti campaigned for the election of Jean Bertrand Aristide before his first term 1991 to 1995, many of them, especially intellectuals like Miriam Merlet or Magali Mersalin, condemned how the first democratically elected president of Haiti ruled the country during his second term 2000 to 2004. Other observers, more favorable of the Fanmi Lavalas party, were more inclined to criticize the period after the coup as a rewind. Back to the same dictatorship tactics. A terror campaign employing rape, murder and disappearance as tactics, and rapidly increasing insecurity undermining all economic activity of the informal sector." To this day, Haiti is "...gripped by shocking levels of sexual violence against girls." Of particular concern is the number of cases of sexual violence reported in the run-up to or during Carnival. Amnesty International and the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights have laid particular pressure on the duty of the state to act in due diligence necessary to prevent and eradicate violence and discrimination against women. Though the MINUSTAH has come with a peacekeeping mandate, a number of cases have arisen where the UN soldiers were found to have abused women. Education Women in Haiti do not benefit from an equal access to education. The rural-urban difference is also considerable as nearly 25% of the women in urban areas have finished secondary school, compared with less than 2% in rural areas. Though most Latin American countries have achieved universal or near universal primary education for all children, for Haiti primary education, the enrollment rate of boys was still somewhat higher than that of girls in 1987, but it is narrowing as the average growth enrollment has been significantly greater for girls than for boys. See also Sexual violence in Haiti general Human rights in Haiti Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Haiti Rapes, Lynn Duff, Pacific News Service, Haiti Action Net, 10 March 2005 Walking on Fire, Haitian Women's Stories of Survival and Resistance, Beverly Bell. Ithaca, Cornell Up, 2001 Gender and Politics in Contemporary Haiti, The Duvalierist State, Transnationalism, and the Emergence of a New Feminism 1980-1990, Carole Charles. Feminist Studies. 1995 Challenging Violence, Haitian Women Unite Women's Rights and Human Rights, Anne Fuller, Association of Concerned African Scholars. Spring, Summer 1999 External links 